Okay guys, uh, welcome back. This is actually part six and I'm actually sort of going a little bit in overtime and uh, just to sort of give ourselves an overview of um, some of the major practices uh, from this video, I actually wanted to take an entirely new piece of sculpt and go a little bit in a separate direction. So instead of the little hard surface pod, I figured I would start up a sort of a bust design for something a little bit more character driven. And so back to my beginning steps and just doing some, some regular sculpting. So uh, this time I, I just opened up, uh, I believe it was either 32 or 64 uh, resolution Dynamesh uh, as a sphere. Uh, those projects are, of course, in your light box. And if you just open them up and, uh, you know, grab it, and I think I changed material and immediately started sculpting. And again, we're using a, a lot of standard brushes. So, uh, you know, I'm sketching along with Damien Standard, uh, making some planner shapes with either uh, the Trim Dynamic and, of course, uh, the H Polish or Hard Polish brush. And the Hard Polish, of course, every once in a while, um, what I'll do is I'll hold Alt, which actually gives, it flattens but it, it in the same way, but it actually kind of gives a little bit of a lip. Uh, rather than pressing down because uh, sometimes you can get some unevenness of surfaces uh, just using uh, H-Polish alone. If you tap on one part, it, it could, you know, if you tap again, it could create sort of a, a dimple. And so I'm very quickly just, you know, setting up some details, uh, some contour lines uh, for, you know, sort of like the, the modular plates that I spoke of before. And I begin masking and immediately start pulling out uh, some parts using either the move or transpose tool. So, you know, hands on the keyboard, I usually uh, keep my fingers close to like either Q, W, E, and R. And what those are, uh, usually Q is the draw mode for ZBrush. W is to hit the transpose move tool. E would be to scale. And R would be uh, the transpose for rotation. And so a lot of times uh, I, I keep my fingers close to those so that when I use the transpose, if I've masked off an area, I can, you know, bend out a shoulder or an arm uh, from a Dynamesh, re-Dynamesh that and get a, a silhouette going uh, very quickly the way that I need to. So uh, I'm just actually, <clears throat> in this part, I'm probably going to start also adding a, a few more kit bash pieces, um, like insert meshes, uh, just of primitives at first, and then uh, anything more complex than that, I start to add a little bit later after I have some form detail built up. So uh, this did, actually didn't take too long. It took about probably uh, an hour or so, maybe an hour or two uh, to work through this and uh, you know did it in, in one evening. And uh, after that, it gave me a lot more to play with than the original sculpts that I, I did uh, for part of this series. So I'm working under the chin, and I'm starting to think, you know, if this is a like a cyborg or a droid, uh, you know, how some of those proportions are going to work out, uh, some of the finer cut lines. I think uh, there's a user also who's uh, more so than the Damien standard brush. Uh, when I do a lot of hard surface brushes, uh, you know, hard surface details, I tend to use some of his brushes. So uh, big thanks to uh, Molochus the Black, who's a longtime uh, ZVC user. Uh, his Mawcut series of brushes, I believe it's Mawcut A and either A, B, and C uh, are you know fan faves of mine that I like to use of his uh, brush set. Uh, which, uh, if you look him up on ZBC, you can probably find some of his uh, his beveled uh, lines for hard surface stuff. It's really really cool. So I, I between that and the Damien Standard, uh, I alternate using clay brush also to build up a lot of details. Uh, when I draw in Damien Standard, what I do is uh, I'll score out sort of a, a shape that I want to pluck out, and again uh, filling that with uh, probably either clay or clay buildup. Uh, you know, it's just sort of like a nice buildup system. And I'm using clip curves also to give myself some planner surfaces very quickly. Uh, it usually depends on the angle. Uh, like if I have a, a good angle to cut from or flatten, uh, literally, um, if you're new to ZBrush, what the clip curve brush does is it, it literally flattens the polys. It does not actually trim it off or cut it off. Uh, so you, in one sense, you can kind of think of it as a, a, a butter knife and you're going to, or, you know, like a, a clay knife and you're going to shave off a certain section but it, it doesn't actually 
separate it and cut it off of the geometry, what it does is it actually flattens the, the polys. And then from there, if you were to redynamish and reorder the points, uh, you know, you get more of a, a clean edge depending on uh, sort of the angle that you cut at. So uh, again, just going ahead and doing some polishing, uh, building up some detail under the chin so I can pull the, pull the contour of the chin out a little bit more. And uh, it's starting to look uh, a little bit more uh, like something uh, than nothing. And that's the pretty much the magic behind ZBrushes. Uh, you know, following a sketching or a thumbnailing process like this, if you switch your, your mindset uh, literally to something like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing as I'm sculpting, uh, you can really pluck out something that's uh, really fast to develop. And if you did this for like an afternoon, you could come up with varying shapes and, and have a variety of design, source designs to, to go from. Uh, and that's sort of uh, a lot of the gist of what I was speaking of uh, from a concept art angle uh, of doing something like this is that, you know, you have a lot of wiggle room to play with. So heading up in the next video, I'm going to continue uh, talking and sculpting here for a minute. And there are a few other treatments along with uh, using our screen tone and also using Photoshop that I want to actually hit up, uh, not just for black and white, but also for color. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the pulsarizing effects by the end of this uh, series videos. Uh, and so please do stay tuned.